Learn the most advanced recruiting techniques. Land the most desirable talent. Launch your company towards massive success. This is the Higher Power Radio Show with Rick Gerard. All right, most good hires are the result of luck rather than skill. In fact, I would argue that very few hires are by design. Throughout my career, I have never met a person who views interviewing and hiring and the hiring process as anything more than a chore that they loathe. In fact, the most common reaction to the subject usually results in a huge, Ugh, or God, I hate hiring because I'm just not good at it. Now we dread the act of interviewing and hiring because it's unstructured and inconsistent and it produces mediocre results. So here's the good news. There is an easy fix. When we train our people how to interview, it brings purpose to each and every interaction, giving our people a basis for decision-making that results in extraordinary hiring. I'm Rick Gerard, and welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show. We help entrepreneurs and executives win-win the strongest hires by sharing insights from top-performing rebel entrepreneurs, game changers, and industry leaders like our guest today, Ms. Karima Gulick. Karima is the CEO and principal patent attorney for InEvent Law. Now, she has dedicated her career to canceling businesses within the tech and creative communities, combining her passion for engineering and the law. Now, Karima is also a polyglot and guides her clients through legal matters in French, English, Arabic, Spanish, and a little bit of Italian as well. She is also the former co-host of the Gen Y podcast, a show where she interviewed innovative lawyers shaking things up in the legal industry. Now, what's cool about Karima is she's building a next generation law firm and is here to share her experience, which is what makes Karima the perfect expert for today's topic. Karima, welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show today. Thank you. So really excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. So actually, you know, just for uh, disclosure, I know Karima from uh, my time with EO and she's an EO member and we're both like building outstanding companies. And I wanted to bring her on today because she is doing some really outstanding work in building in her law firm. And she's trying to do something like kind of outside the box, which is really cool. But she's gonna share some of her experience with hiring today. And uh, we're gonna take a little bit different of an approach we, where we're kind of talking about some of the experience you've had and then we're going to talk about how we were able to fix it. Yeah. So let's talk about what was your biggest challenge? I know that like when I met Karima, she she was a little less smiley, a little less energetic. But today she like super smiles. So let's talk about the challenge that you were uh, facing in your business. You know, it's funny. Um, I, I had a team meeting this morning right before coming here and the and like how much ener more energized how much more in love i am with my business um, and i'm comparing that to just two or three months ago before we embarked on this journey together when i was in pain overwhelmed getting to the point where i honestly was depressed because of my business you know i wanted to do all the things and be there for all of my clients and be there for my family and my loved ones but there's only so much energy we have and we can't keep putting things out to tomorrow because there's only so much energy we're going to have the following day. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I was in so much pain, Rick. Like, it's it's funny because what you mentioned earlier about um, most hires are not by design. Most hires are people who are in pain and need to bring on someone to help them with something. So they're just looking for something to fix that right away. <laughs> yeah. You, most hires are like, I'm in pain. And then also the person's probably in pain because they're looking for a job. Mm -hmm. So you get a lot of pain that's happening there, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. not necessarily a lot of times alleviating the pain, it's creating more pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and coming to, to it from like a, you know, you're so desperate, you really need the help you and and you're you'll just willing to take on anyone who can do the job rather than someone who's going to be a good fit for that business for you for your team. Um, just bringing being more, more intentional about building that business according to that vision that you have when you're when you're acting out of out of, out of pain for example or out yeah. of overwhelm you you really end up just uh trying to you put that vision aside all of those business goals aside and uh, you're not you're not aligned with your with what you're doing with your values or with your vision anymore you're just fixing 
a, a problem, but that quick fix is someone who's going to be with you potentially for years. So it, there's a, a great mismatch there. <laughs> there is. There's a lot. It's a lot like putting duct tape on a leak in a boat, right? Mm -hmm. Like on a hole, right? Exactly. It's not necessarily like, at least for me, I've had the experience where like, and where you're just taking on so much and then finally you're just done and you're like, things are not getting done. And then you feel like you're procrastinating, which you're not, you just don't have the bandwidth to cover mm -hmm. all the work that needs to be done. Right. Yeah. And then I did the same thing where I got really I, like, you start getting depressed and then it's like this cycle of just downward sucking. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right? And honestly, like just not even having that energy to put out there to, to bring on the people who are, who are going to help you. Um, so, you know, the, the idea of hiring in and of itself was really, really overwhelming. Um, you know, adding one more task, learning to do that one task. Um, and, and a lot of business uh, owners might relate to this, but, um, I hired my first paralegal three years ago and I did a really good job at that. Mostly, like you said, by luck, it happened to be yeah. the right fit at the right time. Uh, and I also helped, you know, during that recruiting process, other uh, attorneys with me uh, hire paralegals who they were really happy with. So I thought I was excellent at this hiring game. I could do this. Um, and then last year I went on to try to find my my replacement or someone to help me with the main uh, uh, tasks of the business, which are uh, patent drafting and prosecution and, and you know, um, helping with the patent process. So I made so many mistakes, Rick, last year, trying to hire this person and trying to hire again this year. I didn't think about having brought on a great person three years ago who is still with me, who is a rock star. All I could think of was I failed last year how am I going to do anything differently this year? Okay, sure. I have goals for them. Where am I going to shore up this energy to even bring up these goals for these guys? And, you know, all of these questions and how am I going to go about this? Fine. I can slap a job post on something, but the candidates coming from that are not always the the, the greatest uh, candidates out there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So just not having that clear strategy on how to go about interviewing, selecting candidates, finding the right candidates. I mean, I, I thought I could write an amazing job post, but I was just writing for all the things that I wanted for my vision and for me, not necessarily for somebody for that role. Yeah. Um, another thing is <clears throat> I was, I was, re I'll, I'll scratch that. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. So let's talk a little bit about like why this was important. I mean, like, so I look at, we've all as entrepreneurs felt burnout, right? So, um, so, what was what was happening with the business you know like what did you need what did you need to change like wh where were you with the business so the business was continuing to grow i love working with my clients i have a very personal touch with the clients so um, they'll come to me for you know whenever they need help with something and their needs as their businesses continued to grow so did their uh, legal needs um, but there was only one of me and one of my paralegals and contractors were not cutting it anymore. And yeah. honestly, even like going and trying to find contractors, that that energy to shore up the right contractors was not there anymore. Um, I would find the right contractor and then all of a sudden they would move on to greener pastures or other uh, full time opportunities. So it was it was not a permanent fix. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, patching the bow with that. Exactly. Yeah. Once more. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what what do you feel was was lacking? A lot of things. So first of all, I did not have a proper structure or systems in place to 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 bring on someone. Um, another thing is I was just the whole process was honestly overwhelming. First, I didn't know whether I wanted to bring on a full time or a part time. I decided to just post a job for both and see what what happens. Um, and then I I would just talk before meeting Rick and before working with Rick, um, I would talk to the person for 10, 15 minutes. Have you drafted things? Sure. Send me some writing samples. Um, how long have you been doing this for? And then that's it. And working with Rick just you know, blew my mind. You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> so having... by the way, I didn't bring you on. It was like plug for me, by the way. So, but it's honestly but, like yeah. I was in where I am today versus where I was just two or three months ago, it's it's night and day. I am revitalized. I am back in love with my business. I love my team. We're all like very, you know, aligned. Um, and that did not happen by sheer luck. Um, the person actually ended up hiring as a, as a patent attorney was someone I normally would not even have looked at because 
as Rick taught me, <laughs> look past resumes. You can have amazing employees who are shitty resume writers and you can have amazing resume writers who can sell you anything and who are bad employees. So so just learning that. Um, so much unlearning and then learning new things too. Yeah. God, I've found as a general rule that, um, and this doesn't go for everyone, but like I've found the people that have the worst resumes are the people that don't have time to write resumes. Mm -hmm. And so like they're busy working. So like, you know, and, and it, if you think about a resume is such a lousy evaluation mm -hmm. tool, but like we're making decisions based on that rather than just picking up the phone and having a conversation. Yeah. All right. So you're listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. I'm your host, Rich Gerardin, for our podcast listeners. We're going to take a quick educational moment from our sponsors. Hey, check out stridesearch.com. There you'll find additional content and resources to order your copy of Healing Career Wounds. Let it be your startup secret weapon to landing the most strongest people. Uh, our guest today is Karima Gulick, and she is the CEO and principal patent attorney for Innovent Law. And we're discussing kind of getting actually a handle on your business, right? Like when you're behind on hiring, um, we just talked a little bit about some of the challenges that she had personally in growing her business. And now we're going to talk about how we solve that problem, right? So, you know, I, I had the privilege of working with Karima and, um, and you know, let, let's kind of break down like kind of what, what, the, what the process was for you and, and how you how you got ahead of it and fixed it. Yeah. Um, so the first part, you know, having having a, a job post and if you read Rick's book, he has some really amazing ideas that, you know, you don't even think of uh, things like do you even need to be uh, including all of those job uh, what someone is going to be doing on a day to day basis? Uh, is that necessary? Um, are you writing this as a, as a dream job post or is this the reality of, of your business, too? So so that was the first part. But then the second part is how how he helped me structure the whole process. And that's something that I used for other uh, uh, hires that we brought on. So the first, he structured it mostly in three um, in, in uh, three main components. The first one was the discovery call. And this discovery call was really just getting to know that other person, um, where they're coming from, what are their goals? Um, most of us don't do that when we're interviewing. We're just talking about what are your greatest strengths, what are your greatest weaknesses, and, you know, all the 100 top HR questions. <laughs> oh yeah. I call it like the first, like the 15 minute, you know, verbal diarrhea <laughs> call where like, okay, how much are you looking to make? Uh, what do you do? Can you work these hours? And then let me sell you a little bit about my company. That's exactly yeah, it. So yeah. yeah. So um, the three main parts and I'll go into them and, and share what I've learned uh, throughout each one of them. So that first one was that discovery call, getting to know, um, you know, the, the person getting to know what, uh, where they're coming from, what their goals are. The second part is really you're defining the values for your business and what you want to bring on and then drafting questions that, you know, that will help you uh, land people who are aligned with those values and what you want your business to be. And then the third one uh, being like a work assessment and seeing how you're working together. Um, so back to the first discovery call. This is so funny because just last year I would have had like a, the same calls and ended up with some people who should not be working anywhere. <laughs> um, but some of these discovery calls, I had one attorney just flat out tell me that he was stealing clients from his friend and that he could offer them a better rate somewhere in Wyoming, whereas his friend was in San Francisco. This was number one. A second guy who was just sharing with us that all of the other bar associations were after him personally, and it, it was it was an absolute nightmare. Then we did a few together. One of them who just flat out told us that he was lost, had no idea what he was doing, and he's all about just gaming the system. Like yeah. I just couldn't believe that people were saying these things during interviews. <laughs> people will tell you like the craziest stuff when you ask, and that's the problem. We don't ask most of the time in the conversation. So like, but but you know, the adverse is like, then you find those diamonds in the rough. Those people who like, you're like, oh, you know what? I don't know. I looked at a resume. I'm not too impressed, but I'll have this conversation with this person. Yeah. And, and paper is deceiving. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So uh, looking past that resume and having that conversation, really just getting to know these people and training also your team. So that's something that you helped me with because I did not have the energy to go through all of these resumes and call all of these people, but I knew that something needed to be done and I might be missing my next great hire if I don't 
uh, if I if I don't look at these people. Yeah. So so what Rick also helped me do is help uh, help my train my team on you know asking these questions and um, trying to extract information from them. So so that was the first part that discovery call, which was really really important um, and uh, very very eye opening. And then the second part, oh my God, this was so painful. I can't tell you guys <laughs> how painful this was. So having come, like being from a big aerospace engineering company where I spent eight years where values were literally just words plastered around the walls, integrity, excellence, <laughs> whatever, you know, that meant absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, so what when does he told integrity mean? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what teamwork, what does that mean? Exactly. I don't, yeah. Oh, and then the posters. <laughs> you know, strangely enough, like I, I, I have a friend who has a company and he's got like seven or eight words on their conference room wall. Mm -hmm. I'm like, two of them are fairly similar. I'm like, but what do these mean? Yeah. Like, so I, I did I they know. have an answer? Well, he did, but okay. you know, <laughs> it was we're not working on that one. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, we were thinking about redoing our values. I'm like, yeah, you might want to add some context yeah, to it, yeah. right? So and that was so. Um, Rick and I worked together for a full day trying to come up with these values. So he started off with a list of is it a hundred words? Oh, I don't I know. I don't know. It yeah. was really painful, and I'm like, this applies, and this applies, and this applies, and this applies, and competence, and excellence, and you know, and innovation, and all of these things. I mean, those are all things that we we strive to be, but not everybody's gonna rank 100 on 100 there's that's impossible no company's ever going to do that so so and then he would push me why why competence and what does that mean to you um and and coming up with attributes um and then getting the team involved with these so trying to come up with the values that we really you know that that mean a lot to us so we care not only do we care about our clients but we also care about our team we want to make sure that if someone you know needs help the rest of the team is there for them um, we we care about our clients. We care about their problems. We care about their goals, and they know that. And we make sure that that that's that's felt and know throughout the entire experience. Um, What's more important is what you guys live these values, it, right? It, and yeah. these are things that are not important to you, but it's how you guys operate. It, exactly. Which yeah. Which you guys came up with. Like once we got the first one done, mm -hmm. the the other four came real, or the other three came really quickly. Yeah. And I think I think the most beneficial part for me is, um, like like you said, Rick, is really coming up with these attributes and scenarios on how these things are important to us and how do they manifest themselves in you know in our daily lives uh, at work. So so coming up with these values and then having the rest of the team having their input on well, okay, so how do we show that? Give me some examples of attributes and give me some examples of you know how do how would you describe this how. What did you do last week that implemented this or that where this showed up? What did you do last month where this was important or last year? Um, so working as a team, and I think I honestly was very strengthening as a, as a team building exercise too, to, to all, the, because everybody felt involved uh, and felt like they had a say in, in where this company was going and the vision as well and what we were building and who we were bringing on too. Yeah. So rather than just, hey, this is your new teammate, teach them everything, even though you've never met them before. And by the way, that's something that creates, those, those are the things that create um, loyalty and create like a sense of ownership that keeps people on board. Mm -hmm. This is like what retains really good people. People don't leave when, when they feel like they're really part of something that, that is going to like be, it's going to be something bigger than themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So so yeah. just seeing that, just seeing that, you know, people were like the, the team the, as a whole was more involved and we're excited about this, that they get to have a say in maybe who we bring or we don't bring on and, and why uh, they thought this person would be a great fit for the for the rest of the team. So so um, having those values, we basically reverse engineered some uh, and having those um uh, these attributes and things that we wanted to see in that person uh, and then that new team, uh, me, teammate, <laughs> uh, helped us uh, reverse engineer and come up with uh, behavioral questions mm -hmm. based off of those values. So then we came up with, so for example, for each value, we came up with a couple of questions. And I'll just give an example. So one of them is positivity is very important for us. I want I want a positive team. I don't want any of the you know uh, negative people. And part of it is because what we do is we file a patent to trademark a copyright. And 
almost 80% of the time we're going to get a rejection, right? Just because we're trying to push our luck and trying to get the broadest protection possible for our clients. So we're going to get that rejection. How do we go about overcoming those rejections? So I can't have someone on the team who's just going to say, no, we can't do this. Let's figure something else out. Um, I need someone who's going to look at this as a challenge and be positive about it. So, so that positivity and one of my favorite questions actually came up from this was, uh, do you consider yourself lucky? Because uh, it could tell a lot about a person and how they viewed life and uh, what, you know, how they were as, as a person based off of that question alone. Which, by the way, isn't actually a behavioral interview question, but we back into a behavioral interview question with it, right? So behavioral interview questions are like, I, I think, the most telling um, pieces of information because people just share with you like how they operate. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's really good raw data that gives you uh, a decision making, like decision making evidence to support whether or not you move forward or you don't, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, with the, do you consider yourself lucky one? I love that one too, because like you'll get some weird answers out of it. We, I had somebody, no, every time I go to Vegas, I lose. I'm like, okay. <laughs> don't go to Vegas. <laughs> no, but it was interesting because you know, it, it does show somebody's outlook on life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? exactly. And and I've had other people that, that actually frame it, well, I don't, I'm not really lucky, but I consider myself very blessed or very fortunate mm -hmm. because of da da da, and they'll run through a story. And those stories are what where you find the gold. Exactly. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. And so it's funny, but like just having, after learning this uh, from you, I started looking. Okay, so one of the things that I want you use for it example, as a dating question now. No, but like just <laughs> anything anyone else is coming into my life. So one of the things, so for example, I was hiring an admin, and one of the the number one criteria that I need from an admin is someone who's going to pick a task and run with it right away, no yeah. procrastination, which I know I can be very guilty of sometimes. And so we I, all can. Is. <laughs> But one thing I noticed is all of the people around me who are not procrastinators um, unpacked their luggage as soon as they came back from a trip. That was one of the, the commonalities between them. So I started using that as an interview question. Like, what's the first thing that you do after you come back from a trip? Or, or do you unpack right away? And most people were very honest about answering that. And uh, it was a little telling. Huh. <laughs> so that is... That's an interesting, like a really good question. Although you probably don't want to lead the witness by saying, so is uh, unpacking your luggage the first thing you do, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I've um, I've asked similar questions like, tell me how your closet is organized. And when I was looking for an admin, this was what, like in the early incarnation of me, like trying to figure out, like, you know, is it by color or do you have it by like style or what? You know, so like I fed them answers and then, I remember um, somebody I really liked. I the, I got the impression this person was super organized. And then another thing that we did was um, we would actually go to lunch as a team, but actually we would have the we would have the person who was interviewing drive. Okay. And then I remember we got in the car with this person, and their their car was just a wreck. <laughs> like there was bottles and cans and McDonald's wrappers <laughs> on the floor, and I'm like, oh, this person is not organized yeah. at yeah. all. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Sometimes we hear what we want to hear, yeah. <laughs> which is a really good thing. All right. So then uh, what was the next piece? And then um, so up to this point, some of the, some of the candidates still seemed strong. Uh, and I wanted to s move forward in the process, which is the, the last process being the, that work assessment. Um, and, you know, at this stage, you could tell the candidates that were already dropping some of the people who seemed like strong candidates. But by this stage, were losing steam or were not as responsive as I wanted them to be, or not as excited and enthusiastic about the work assessment as, as they, they made it sound um, uh, previously. Yeah. So, so the last one is, um, I came up with a little exercise for them to do, and I paid them for that exercise, but I also wanted to collaborate with them to give them that exercise and see how they would think through it before they went on it and, and did the work on their own. And um, so the, the, one, the one candidate that we actually ended up hiring, Rick, it was so energizing working with him during that working session. And, and it was it was night and day. It was it was exactly what I was looking for that, you know, um, that breath gives of, you like a clear view of exactly what it's going to be like to work with that. Person. Exactly. And yeah. I can't believe I've never thought of even doing that. That makes your life easy. And yeah. you're getting work done at the same time. Exactly. So that's yeah. like the most uh, beneficial piece of the working session is that like, 
hey, I'm also getting work done as I'm interviewing somebody. Yeah. Well, how can that not benefit everybody? Yeah. And so, I'm learning about how things are problem solved and what it's like to work with this person. Yeah, and getting to see them in action too. It was um, it was very very eye opening. So I absolutely loved the the strategy. It's something that we're using for um, every uh, every other hire every hire that we're doing for for the company. Um, so usually, so we had the discovery call, right? That's where we get to know the person. Then we had the the behavioral question, the value based questions to see whether this person would be a good fit. And then the last part, that work assessment to see how they would actually do um, uh, on the job, how they think and how how they operate. And normally after this, someone who wasn't prepared because they didn't have in that discovery call what the minimum requirements for that person would be, would might just make an offer and just shoot for something and not really know whether the person is going to accept or not. But Rick has built in in that discovery call where you're getting to know that person as the last part of that call is uh, asking the candidates, what are their minimum requirements? What do they need to see in order for them to accept the job? Um, and that's a way of, I, I love the structure because they're getting to, they're, they're opening themselves up to you. They're sharing their lives with you. They're sharing their goals and fears with you. And then they're being honest about what it would take for them to, to come work for you. So when you're tailoring that, that offer, you know exactly what they need and, uh, and, and make that offer based off of that. And it results super easy, huh? Yeah. 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 Shoot. I yeah. wish I knew this Rick guy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Shoot. We're running pretty close on time. Um, Karima, what would be two or three key takeaways you can give the audience that can plug into the business today? Don't be lazy about this process. Even though you're in pain and you're just looking for someone to do the job, put a little bit of effort into it. It will pay back in dividends. Yeah, definitely. All right, shoot. Well, I want to thank our listening audience for um, tuning in to this week's episode of Higher Power. Krima, thanks so much for your time investment today. And I want to welcome you to the Higher Power Radio community. Now, what's the best way in which uh, members of the audience can find you, find um, your firm, everything else? Yeah, sure. Um, so we're very active on social media. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, I'm the patent lady. Uh, and uh, Twitter as well, the patent lady. And I'm the patent lawyer on Instagram. Uh, and otherwise, in event law. Perfect. And the, uh, all the links will be in the show notes as well. So uh, thank you to our listening audience for tuning in to this episode of Higher Power. Quick thanks to our team, Brian Colburn, Andrea Ballin, and Ayla Gerard. If you're listening to the podcast, please subscribe, review, and share. After all, this show's for you. So we want to continue to bring valuable content week after week. You can join the Higher Power Radio community at Higher, H-I-R-E, Power, P-O-W-E-R, Radio, R-A-D-I-O.com. Or you can drop me an email at rickettstridesearch.com. Tune in next Tuesday for another um, great episode of Higher Power Radio. We've got actually a special guest we're working on locking down, so I'm not going to say who it is. I'm your host, Rick Gerard, and you have been listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. Aloha. Yeah. Aloha. Thank you for listening to Higher Power Radio. Catch our LinkedIn live show every Tuesday at noon or download the podcast on iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, or your favorite podcast platform. We appreciate you joining us on Higher Power Radio with your guide to recruitment success. Rick Gerard. 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 Gerard.